Hello viewers, this is AK Wasp, and today I'm bringing you the guide to the Furious Charge Barbarian uh, items as well as skills, as I promised. Um, and I'm going to go over this in two parts. The first part is the are the items that you use for greater rifts, so essentially the top tier items. Uh, the second part are the items and skill changes that you adjust when going into the Torment 6. Uh, Nephilim rifts for faster efficiency because the monsters aren't as tough so you don't need as much lethality and speed is actually a better optimizer um, and then the final uh, touch we'll actually be talking about uh, alternative items that are available for other things such as the uh, um, Keystone of Trials uh, trials period so anyways without uh, further ado um, the backbone to the Furious Charge Barbarian build is the Raycor set. Um, and the best way to apply it nowadays is to wear five pieces. So all pieces except for the shoulder piece. So your helmet, your chest armor, your legs, your boots, and your gloves should all be Raycors. Um, and there's really not any exception to that um, in terms of greater rift, rifts. And the reason for this is because we want the five-piece set bonus, um, which, well, we definitely want the four-piece set bonus, which is the Furious Charge gains the effect of every rune. But additionally, the additional 3,000% damage over time that you get from the five-piece set bonus is just too good to pass up. However, what really makes this build, this uh, set shine is the Vile Ward. So Vile Ward is just the single biggest item that you can get to really increase your damage output as a Furious Charge Barbarian. Um, and the higher percentage that you can get on the very uh, last unique uh, secondary ability, which is that Furious Charge deals 35 increased damage for every enemy hit while charging, that is huge. That is such a big deal. That right there is what really makes Furious Charge incredibly effective against groups of monsters because every um, additional monster that you hit in a group is just it just causes the whole group to blow up even further. Uh, while I am hovering over the items, I'm not going to be discussing uh, the particular stats that you want to try and get for in each item, but uh, go ahead and feel free to pause the video at any point uh, to look at. Um, the stats that my particular items have. I don't. I don't claim to have the best uh, stats on each of the items, although I do have the items that I do want. So um, I'll talk about that briefly. Anyways, so the core of the build is is as has been described. Um, the belt, the best belt in my opinion, is the Pride of Cautious. Ca ca I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, but basically, uh, you can. Uh, the secondary effect is really what you want on it, and that's increasing the duration of ignore pain uh, from anywhere between four to six seconds. This uh, you you want it. You definitely want this belt because ignore pain is fantastic, and additionally, uh, you definitely want it to increase the duration by six seconds. So if you get a four second or a five second roll, you want to keep trying to get a new belt that has six seconds because that's the most important stat on that item. Um, as far as the rings, I like to use a unity ring, so which um, this, particular, this particular unity ring happened to roll pretty nicely, so I'm happy with it. Uh, the big benefit is that when you're playing uh, on a private game, that is not a public game with other players, but privately, uh, as long as you have a unity ring equipped, and so does your follower, um, if the follower is immune from death, which is another item that I'll talk about in a second, essentially all damage you take is halved. So all damage you take is split evenly between you and the follower, and the follower is immune to damage. So essentially, you get like double your toughness, if you want to look at it that way, which is really great. Uh, and, and too good to pass up. If you're playing a private game, you absolutely want the Unity Ring. The other ring that I use is a Stone of Jordan Ring. Uh, again, I use this one because I happen to roll quite nicely. Um, it's, it's a 20% fire skills. I prefer if it was a 20% physical skills, but I haven't been lucky enough to get that. Um, but the damage versus elites is fantastic. Um, in general, if you could do without strength rolls in favor of critical damage and critical hit chance, um, even a cooldown reduction would be nicer. 
Um, however, I haven't been that lucky, and I had to roll for sockets to get the gems. Um, and then as far as my amulet, it's not a great amulet, but these are essentially the type of rolls you'd like to see. Physical skills, critical hit, critical chance, uh, and a socket. Um, and, the, and the passive is, is a decent passive, so I choose to use it. Um, yeah, there's not too much to say about that, except that I'd be a lot better off with actually an immunity necklace. So something that gives fire immunity or lightning immunity would be a lot preferred. But I don't have that, so my necklace is the one piece of gear that I've been actively trying to improve. But they cost so much to gamble for Kandala that it's crazy. But it's what it's the item that I'm currently most eager to uh, upgrade. Um, as far as the sh sh uh, bracer slot, um, these ancient Parthen defenders are really good, specifically for their unique ability, which is reducing the uh, damage you take, which is huge. Um, especially because it's for each stunned enemy and when you're charging into hordes of monsters there's obviously multiple stunned enemies so this is just a very very good survivability item um, until the recent patch where they changed the way that the dreadnought rune works on furious charge the previous favorite item was actually the strong arm bracers which are still a viable alternative however um, because of the way that knockback has been changed, so essentially only the monsters at the end of the charge take knockback and they don't get um, sort of dragged around with you as, as you were used to be able to pull monsters from room to room uh, in, the, in the previous iterations of Furious Charge. The strong arm bracers have kind of lost their favor um, in favor of the extra toughness you get from the ancient Parthen defenders. And uh, last but not least, on the Greater Rift build, a furnace. The furnace, there's no, there's no singular better item that you can have than an ancient furnace. Um, unfortunately, this one's not as great as I'd love it to be, but it does have good damage. I had to roll, uh, it actually dropped as an intelligence furnace, so I had to roll it into strength. Otherwise, I would rather have rolled the vitality into 10% damage, um, and the unique 24 percent damage on hit, uh, I'd rather ha that have rolled as a uh, cooldown, but there's nothing you can do about that. Um, additionally, I used one of my gifts, so a Ramalandi gift, I believe, I don't know how you pronounce that, but basically it's a very rare item that drops. Um, supposedly it's about as rare as a furnace, although I have gotten three gifts and only one furnace that I have ever dropped. So that should tell you something. But essentially you can only use it on a weapon and it adds a weapon. So it's the only way you can actually add an extra ethics uh, to an item in Diablo 3. So it essentially adds a socket where a socket previously, previously wasn't present. So if you dropped an item that came with a socket, you can roll that socket off into another stat um, and then add a socket this way. Or in this case where the item, the weapon didn't drop with a socket, you add a socket and you rolled one of the other stats intelligence into strength so that's the core of the items that i use for greater rifts for fear charge barbarian um uh, in a moment i'll discuss the, uh, the items that i swap out for Tor torment six rifts but first i'll actually go over the skills that i use so furious charge no brainer um you get the effect of every single rune with it so you get all these benefits um, basically, you want to w align whatever rune uh, elemental type uh, you have the most amount of elemental stack damage. So physical is best if you can. Um, in my case, I actually have a little bit more fire damage, but physical is the best that you can try to go for for everything. Um, ground stomp uh, again, another great physical skill. Essentially pulls everybody in an AOE close on top of you, which really which really increases the effect of the Vile Ward uh, hoarding. So it's it's a great skill. Um, again, the physical rune happens to increase the AOE of it, which is even better. Um, so it's just great. Uh, Battle Rage is essentially um, the only item that you have that costs Fury. So no, all the other, I all the, not item I should say, but the only skill that costs fury. So this is your only fury spender, um, and it's a very low cost fury spender, but it, it increases your AOE damage as well as your critical hits. 
but I'll, I'll explain in a second why having a fury spender is important and why having a low cost one is particularly helpful too. Um, and largely the fury spender is important because of the ignore pain, ignorance is bliss rune. So this greatly, greatly reduces the amount of damage you take uh, during the duration, which is five seconds, which plus your belt is six seconds, which then when you reduce it by your cooldown reduction, essentially you start getting close to having a 50% uptime on ignore pain which is huge the other big effect that it has is uh immunity to control impairing effects so if you get frozen if you get jailed um you can just go ahead and ignore pain straight out of that um, and the rune specifically uh gives you life per fury spent and the only way you have to spend fury is on the battle rage so essentially you activate ignore pain and then you spam your battle rage over and over to essentially heal because the only methods you have for healing are potion and battle rage and you know life on hit that sort of life on kill that sort of stuff um but most of your healing will be coming from ignore pain um with the uh life per fury spent uh using battle rage um that synergizes well with the passive which is uh berserker's rage which deals additional 25% damage when you're near maximum fury. So basically because the only time you're ever gonna spend fury is on battle rage to heal, uh, the rest of it, and, and it uses so little fury, um, you're gonna pretty much have close to 100% uptime on this passive, which is great. Uh, it adds a lot of damage. Uh, I'll go over the rest of the passives in a second. But the final two skills are actually your two ultimates. So again, we're gonna go with, with well, on the Wrath of the Berserker, which is a, they're both uh, two minute cooldown ultimates, um, but we have a lot of cooldown reduction that aims to keep, uh, increase the uptime on this. And essentially you want to pop these on Elite Packs, definitely on the Guardians, um, and if you're on a T6 Rift, you actually want to alternate between the two because you don't need both up at the same time. Um, the physical rune on Wrath of the Berserker is easily the, or what well, yeah the I guess they're all physical but the in, in insanity rune the extra fifty percent damage is easily the best rune available on Wrath of the Berserker so there's not really much to think about and the fact that it's physical synergizes with uh, the rest of our build very nicely um, and Call of the Ancients we're going with the fire rune because again the extra damage that it outputs is too good to pass so even if you have heavily stacked plus physical elemental damage on your items you still want to go with the fire rune because it's just it's just so good. Um, you want that. So these are your two ultimates. Um, and then as far as passives, um, one passive that reduces the cooldown. So essentially cutting 30 seconds off. So a quarter of the cooldown off of your two ultimate abilities. That is absolutely fantastic to have. You gotta have that passive. Uh, and it synergizes well with the rest of your cooldown reduction abilities to again, try and get closer to 50% um, not uptime, but 50% reduction in cooldown. So getting these cooldowns from two minutes down to one minute, and then they last for 20 seconds. So you're getting closer to, what, 33% uptime. But the, the more uptime you get on your ultimates, the better. They're fantastic, and they're your major way of dealing with, especially Call of the Ancients, is your major way of dealing with single target damage because everything else synergizes well at crowd control, at taking out hordes of monsters. Call of, your, Call of the Ancients is the answer to uh, bursting down a single target like a Rift Guardian um, as best as it is possible to do. Um, additionally, uh, we're going with a sort of glass cannon build, if you will. So no defensive passives, everything just increasing damage, increasing damage. And Rampage is fantastic for that. Uh, 25 times uh, 1%, so that, that's 25% extra strength every, um, to last for 8 seconds, so basically when you're just killing hordes of monsters, you're just getting more strength, and you're getting uh, more and more damage, and strength also translates into armor, so toughness, so it's just really good, but you're doing it mostly for the added damage. Ruthless, similarly, 30%, uh, 40% additional damage uh, kicks in when the uh, enemies are only below 30% health, so basically that last... Excuse me. That last stretch of killing the Rift Guardians, killing elite mobs, essentially goes that much faster because of the ruthless, and it's it's very worthwhile keeping. Berserker way rage we already mentioned, but um, yeah, another just glass cannon 
uh, passive that just increases your DPS further and really helps push out the damage out of these Furious Charge builds on Barbarians. Right, well that is the Greater uh, greater Rift build. Um, I make a slight modification, or a few modifications when going into the Torment 6 Rifts. Oh, I, sh I should have mentioned, I didn't mention uh, the gem choices. So the Bane of the Trapped, the Pain Enhancer, Enhancer and the Gem of Efficacious Toxin are the, the gems of choice for physical um, physical elemental damage um, furious charge builds they're, they're the best options now however when you're going into a torment 6 rift uh, all the monsters are much weaker so killing them in one hit is a lot less effort than uh, the slowly pounding them down that you do in greater rifts so you don't need as much uh, damage output and you also don't need as much toughness. Um, so with the toughness trade-off I switched the into Nemesis braces, Bracers which basically uh, for the unique ability which is that every time you hit a shrine or a pylon it spawns an elite mob pack which is great because those have the extra uh, drop rate for legendary items um, and it's essentially what you want. If you're in a rift you're there primarily to kill elite packs so with the Nemesis Bracers you're spawning more of them and you know just good all around and you don't need the uh, you don't need the added toughness from the ancient Parthen defenders. Um, additionally, I switch uh, my ring into a ring of royal grandeur. Um, I do keep the unity, so I switch the um, stone of Jordan into a ring of royal grandeur. And with that, I also bring in the uh, boon of the hoarder gem, which causes a lot more gold to drop. So essentially, increases your gold farming when you're doing T6 rifts. But it also gives you a 30% move speed bonus every time you pick up gold. So you're running a lot faster and that uh, is nice. That That is essentially where you're gaining efficiency on a T6 first because you're moving faster um, and the extra gold that drops is a nice perk as well. And the reason that we're switching to the Ring of Royal Grandeur is essentially so that we can swap off the helmets. So switching off the Raker Helm into the Leoric's Le 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 Crown is incredibly helpful and it's not doable without the Ring of Royal Grandeur because essentially with the Ring of Royal Grandeur we can still get our 5 set bonus by only wearing 4 pieces of the Raycor set. Um, and since the shoulder is always going to be vile ward, there's no reason to even think about sw swapping the shoulder. But the Leoric's Crown, the effect of which uh, increases the effect of any gem socketed by up to 100%. Um, greatly in this is the single largest amount of cooldown reduction that I get on any of my gear um, so this is great this boosts uh, the 12.5 percent to something like 20 percent which is really nice I mean that's that's right there uh, more than half of all my total cooldown reduction combined just from the Leoric crown with the diamond gem in it so it's a really nice item it took me forever to farm i remember when this was a season one seasonal barbarian um and i just spent so many hours just constantly gambling and gambling and gambling to try and get Leoric's crown and i was just so happy when this one finally dropped so i still love to use it um and i just i just personally have a memory of how long it took me to finally find this drop because uh, for barbarians it's uh, with a smart loot, it's it's a relatively rare drop. It's common for intelligence heroes, but it's not a common drop for strength, uh, specifically barbarian heroes. The final item, so of the of the four items that I'm swapping, I'm also swapping the belt. Um, so this is a belt because again we don't need that extra uptime on the ignore pain because it's not a real issue as far as toughness goes. Um, this belt essentially. Uh, increases the movement speed view of you and your allies for 10 seconds, uh, 30 to 40 percent every time you use Warcry. So again, it's just another item that gives you additional move speed to help you uh, progress through the rifts and get from mob to mob faster. So um, obviously, if you're doing that, you need to change your skills. Um, and the skill I swap off is Ignore Pain because again, we're swapping the belt that uses Ignore Pain off into sp um, not sprint, excuse me. Um, into uh, Warcry. Where is this? 
Warcry. And any of these is a decent option as far as uh, the Warcry. Um, I go with Impunity, uh, increases the resistance to all elements by 20%. Um, again, not really necessary, but might as well. It's it's one of the better runes for Warcry. Uh, and again, you're mostly using Warcry just for the move speed bonus, so you're going to be spamming this. It's also a, um, a Fury Generator, so that's nice, but mainly I use it for the move speed bonus. Um, and the other item that I, or the other skill that I swap off is away from ground stop in favor of sprint. And I go sprint with the one that makes tornadoes, which is this one, run like the wind, which is another physical, I guess they're all physical um, skill, which is nice. Um, but essentially, the nice thing about this is so you don't really need to worry about grouping up monsters, but the added move speed, oh, I need some free. The, so when you do it, it causes these little tornadoes that follow behind you, and each of those tornadoes individually can proc your damage over time uh, abilities, both from the Raycar set as well as from the um, runes, or not runes, gems, sorry. So anyways, that is essentially the difference in items and skills and the ones that I choose for uh, completing greater rifts as well as for Termin 6 rifts. Um, and finally, I'm just going to mention uh, that when I go in, so sometimes I'll, I'll swap into diamond armor, although it's uncommon nowadays. Um, if I'm really feeling a pinch for elemental, um, against elemental types in greater rifts, um, and it's actually not a bad option to do so, uh, especially when you're newer to Greater Rifts and you don't know how to charge properly. But basically with, with time and, and experience, you learn how to effectively deal with the mobs and charge them effectively so that the that added amount of elemental bonus is less significant than the added amount of damage you get from the added strength from the rubies. But still, if you're new to Furious Charge, consider putting in diamonds in place of rubies on your chest piece and on your leggings. Um, additionally, the the one of the two runner-ups for the furnace, if you don't if you haven't been lucky enough to get a furnace, is a Maximus. Um, the other one is a Heart Slaughter, which I don't even have. Uh, essentially the Maximus is the fire variant and Heart Slaughter is the physical variant. Um, I use this Maximus for a long time until I finally got my furnace. Um, it's really good. It does. It's it's nice. Um, I keep it around because I actually do swap into it um, when I'm doing the uh, these things, the, these Keystone of Trials, to get into the Greater Rifts because the 50% or in this case 48% increased damage from the furnace doesn't help you in the trials because there's no elite monsters to be killing. So essentially the extra fire damage is uh, is nice to have instead in place of the uh, elite damage. So I keep Maximus around for that reason. Uh, the strong arm bracers I had mentioned, I never use them anymore, but they're still they were nice when I had them when they were uh, a top tier item. They're still a very strong item. And finally, um, these coils bracers, uh, using them specifically only in the Keystone Trial. Um, period, specifically because the uh, of the unique ability, which uh, resets your cooldown significantly when you hit a healing well, and there's four healing wells that spawn in the area, so basically you pop your ultimates and you reset them, and then your ultimates are ready as soon as they're off of, off of um, their duration, so the cooldown's always up. So you can have your, your ultimates up at all times with these items um, in a period when you don't need the extra strength from the Parthen defenders and shrines are again a non issue because there's no shrines in the trials. Um, the only other option would really be the strong arm bracers, but having your ultimates up 100% is a lot more helpful than having a little bit of extra damage from uh, knockbacking um, a few mobs here and there. Um, and finally, I haven't touched on, but I will, um, the Templar items. So I go with these uh, skills so heal. Loyalty, Charge, and Guardian um, versus the others. These are just the ones that I prefer. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, 
uh, if you want to go with the other ones, that's fine. They're, they're not, I don't think that the choices here are significant, although these are the choices that I've made. Um, the Templar unique item, token, relic, it's called. Um, specifically, you want one that has uh, that your follower cannot die. That's the one that makes um, your follower immune to damage. And it's why when both you and him are using a unity ring, uh, reduces the damage you take by half, or in half, by 50%. So that's really good, and uh, you definitely, definitely want that. If you're doing a private game, you want the relic that so that your follower is immune to damage, and the unity ring so that you take half as much damage. Um, otherwise, you want a weapon that is um, essentially has a high proc coefficient. So Thunder Fury is um, probably one of the best options out there. Um, and then you also want. Um, the S of, of Johan uh, is a nice one specifically for the unique ability, which is that it essentially gives a free ground stomp when it procs. So it pulls in enemies towards the Templar, which gives you an easy, convenient target to charge at. Um, and the Bullcather's uh, Wedding Band, the unique uh, draining life from enemies around you, is very strong also on the melee um, Templar. And finally, the uh, chance to freeze an attacker off of the shield, which is freeze of deflection, is very nice. Um, although there are definitely other shields that are uh, viable options, this is the one that I personally prefer. And as far as socketing the items, um, followers gain a lot more from every point of strength than heroes do. So rubies are really the best option to go with here um, because every point of strength gives followers a lot more than what we get for every point of strength so they benefit a lot from those rubies um, the only exception is obviously in the weapon because um, Blizzard only wants people to ever put emeralds into weapons because nothing else is viable and that might change one day but it hasn't so far um, so yeah if you have a weapon it's always going to be an emerald um, otherwise that's um, everything that I had in mind to cover as far as items and skills go for a Furious Charge Barbarian. Hope you learned something today, um, and uh, thanks for watching, and yeah, uh, go ahead and check out additional uh, of my videos, um, and have a nice day.